Hello, welcome to Unrestricted View Film Festival. My name's James Wren, I'm the festival director. And today I'm joined by Cy Thomas, Oliver Britton, and Dominic O'Rourden from Breakdown. Brilliant short film, uh, very, very funny, and we're delighted to have it in the festival. Hi, guys. Hey, James. Uh, hey. hey, hey, so, um, hey. First of all, uh, just sort of one at a time, tell us a bit about yourselves, starting with Cy. Uh, yes, uh, I'm Cy Thomas. Uh, my background uh, is stand-up comedy, um, which is where our paths have crossed in, in the past, James, with uh, Hen and Chicken's pre previews in Edinburgh and that kind of stuff. Um, but I'm an actor as well and a writer. And uh, yeah, that's, that's sort of me, really, based in London. Um, and uh, I know these two boys through... Uh, well, we'll go into that in a little bit more detail, but that's me, basically. Oh, fantastic. And um, Dominic? Paul, so I'm Dominic O'Riordan, the uh, director. Um, and yeah, I, was, I sort of specialise commercials, music videos. Um, and yeah, kind of the reason why we did this was we're all kind of trying to make that push more into long form. And yeah, I mean, as, as Sai says, we, we'll go into that a bit later on. But yeah, we've, we've been pals for years and we kind of wanted to, we've collaborated in a few things in the past and this just felt like it was the right kind of idea to, yeah, to do something else. So yeah, it was great. Fantastic. And Ollie. Yeah, hi. Um, um, I am, yeah, I guess first and foremost an actor. Um, I sort of love comedy and um, I've done musicals and voiceover and I sing in, in, in a band and things like that. But yeah, first and foremost an actor and yeah, obviously met Don through the commercial world and Sai as well on this wacky job that we'll talk about. And um, yeah, very excited to be here, plugging and talking about our awesome short film. Fantastic. So, all right. So, um, I mean, you, you briefly touched on it there, Dominic, but how, how did this all come about? Where did the, the idea for this film come from? Cool. Well, Sai and Ollie, um, Sai and Ollie actually, actually wrote this, so maybe they can sort of go into, go, yeah. go into that. Thing. But yeah, as we, I'll just go into it. So basically we met, we think it's about seven, eight years ago, where I was casting for a commercial for Bridgestone. And basically it was, uh, it was quite random, it was for November. And the idea was we got this massive, um, well, massive, uh, standard size uh, camp, red camper truck. And we put this huge moustache on the front of it and we were kind of going around Europe um, to all these sort of underground moustache clubs, which was quite a weird job. It, it was great. But it kind of, when I saw these two in the casting, I instantly knew that they were the kind of perfect four for each other. Um, and also they were getting on really well because that was quite important because we were like on the road for, I think it was about like two, it was two weeks pretty much, staying in random little B&Bs driving at 30 miles an hour um, down motorways in this red camper van. So it was going to be quite an intimate uh, intimate gig. And, and yeah, they got on really well. We've all stayed in touch. I've cast them both in other commercials since. And um, and yeah, and with this, 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 they kind of brought the script to me. And I was like, yeah, of course, I jump at the chance to be involved with them. Because I do generally, whenever I'm doing anything comedy, I always try and kind of coerce them in or get them in the casting. A lot of the time, they're too big time to do it. But yeah, that's no, great. <laughs> <laughs> a good opportunity to get yeah get, get the pals back together. There's sadly no no red camp. But, uh, yeah, boys, talk, talk about the script. Yeah, so uh, I mean, I guess there was sort of I don't know about this almost like a subconscious um, thing that obviously, obviously the the job that Don mentioned there. We were thrown on day one, having not actually met each other because we didn't cast together. We were thrown into this camper van, and it was kind of like off you go, drive across Europe. So we were immediately trapped in this van for like two weeks because didn't go above miles per hour which is a real nightmare on the auto immediately ollie and i were in the situation and thank god we got on and have become such good friends through it because if it had been a nightmare and you're trapped in a position with someone that you you know you you despise or find uncomfortable to be around it would have been a nightmare and i guess that's almost what happens in, in in breakdown film is that so perhaps there was that subconscious thing that happened there um but yeah, Ollie, I think no, I'm sure you agree with that as well. Oh God, yeah. I mean, it's just it's funny because as you said, like Dom cast us both, but not together, not even like a recall. He was just like, he's the guy, he's the guy. <laughs> and so on that first day one, it's like, hi, nice to meet you. And then I think we literally it was like six in the morning. We we went and got shaved, cutthroat, you know, sort of a shave, you know, super clean because the idea is our moustaches would grow back as we interviewed these wacky mustachioed people all across Europe. And as Sai says, yeah, we we just had so much time in the actual camper van like we actually drove from london to berlin via like antwerp strasbourg i mean we, we did big old stints of driving and so we you just talk and talk about everything and after that amazing experience which yes so i said you know thank god we got on and we bonded and, and obviously with dom as well we, we were like we have to write we have to write something you know we have to sort of try and 
because we, we would just talk about everything and we thought these sort of innocuous stories and talking about our past and but we were laughing along we thought is there something in this and so we ended up writing um loads of like, random things we've, we've written like kind of two sitcoms one which merged into another one and and then we said hey let, let's write a short and um and, and then and that's when we thought, why don't we get Don back? You know, we'd, we'd work for in between and we've always got on and we're all pals. So it's just kind of a dream, a dream scenario, really, that seven or eight years later, after we had this mad experience, which was mostly fun, but kind of crazy and wacky, but just a life changing experience. We've all actually got together and, and made something which, as Sai says, maybe subconsciously is always kind of linked in with that stuck in a car together in, 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 in a bizarre, you know, sort of situation. And uh, that's kind of, yeah, what I think you get in the film. So yeah, it's fun. Yeah, it did. So, I mean, w w is there a situation that that, that sort of um, brought this up? I mean, w was it based on sort of a, something that happened, or, or was it just you know an idea that sprang? I think, I think like um, I think all of us quite like the idea of a kind of that discomfort. There's something inherently funny about being trapped in that position, not being able to escape, and the sort of social constructs which mean you can't speak your mind you have to cover your true feelings a little bit and I think you know if we point into particular time I guess the fact that me and Ollie were thrown I mean I remember like Ollie is like, I love Ollie to bits he's a big character he's so funny and I remember on the first day when I first met him I thought oh this guy's no offense Ollie, it's quite a lot but <laughs> he's full on thankfully <laughs> within a few hours I was like you know to quote Alan Partridge I'm convinced he's my best friend so <laughs> it was fine but just that thought, I guess, almost is like, imagine being stuck in that thing. And it's just a funny scenario. We've all been in those positions where you're trapped with someone in a really awkward place. You're thrown in by circumstance into a position with someone who you would never, you'd normally cross the road to avoid. Yeah. Um, and I think that's just inherently funny. And yeah. that really was probably the basis of uh, the, sit uh, sorry, the film. And we'd written sitcom, uh, a couple of sitcom scripts as well that were based around that kind of dynamic of being thrown into an awkward position with someone who you would normally try and avoid because it's just it's just funny yeah yeah totally i think i think it was that uh, inspired by uh, the the, char the character dynamic that we fell into when we wrote some of the other bits we'd done like the sitcom was the idea of these two people that are not com compatible at first but for some reason they kind of end up together in a way you know it's sort of an unlikely duo you know and but but you know with our own spin on it and our own sense and the, and you know behind the truth being that we, we do get on but it's funny to play up to the different dynamic and I think we took that dynamic and we thought you know what are some funny scenarios that we could that a we could make into a short film and b is, is you know you know quite funny and we just thought this is quite good because on the face of it it's not like a prison you're just broken down but in a weird way yeah there is no way you can go you, you can't walk you know just like he could leave the car and walk around in, in the wilderness, but then it would just be too bizarre, you know. And the fact is, he's very polite and proper, and we're all trying to get on, but it's obviously in, insanely awkward. And you know, we, then we ramp up the comedy with some more obscure little scenarios in it. And uh, I think it kind of wrote itself, really, didn't it? Once we sort of got it going, I think we wrote it in like two or three meetings or something like that. Yeah, I think the essence of it was quite quick to throw together because it's just a, like a funny construct of being trapped in that position, and then it's working out what devices what little set pieces are yeah funny and ramp that awkwardness and humor up and that's where don comes in and we think how who's going to film this well and, and make it look really good but also capture the you know the claustrophobic essence i think don brings that in in the direction that the way that we're kind of cramped in I've this got, space you know, know i think for me like when i when i read the scripts because like we always you know we, you know it's like when you're busy with commercial projects and stuff and the boys were like right we've got the scripts and over it and I, as soon as i read it it's funny because the thing I love about the two of them is that they're both very different. They're both, they're, they work very well. So that certain things that Sai is really good at that he does naturally is very different to what Ollie does. So if it, I think if you had two similar actors or two similar characters in that scenario, it would, it would be a challenge to sort of keep it entertaining because they are situ sat in the car. So again, for me, I was trying to think of different ways I could film it or, you know, I was thinking, do I do all these like nice kind of little moves or, you know, really abstract, crazy angles. And in the end, once we, we did quite a few rehearsals where I got, got the boys over, they came over to mine, had some cake, had some coffee and just sort of rehearsed and tried our little things. And in the end, I just kind of kept, got to thought, I was like, don't shock. Because again, when you're doing a short film, you kind of want to make a statement, you want to make uh, a piece. But actually my approach in the end was to keep it very uncluttered, keep it all about performance, very simple. We were, we were really meticulous in our rehearsals and actually we, we chose to shoot on one of the shortest days of the year, classic. <laughs> Considering it's like the sun starts on this side of the film, ends there, and with the minimum amount of 
at daylight hours to shoot this thing, which again added a massive um, uh, added, added complications and meant it, you know, if we're shooting on a summer's day, you could have done more takes and moved things around more, but actually for me, it was like, keep it uncluttered, keep it simple, let the performances breathe. And, um, and hopefully, I think in the film, you won't notice the edit, you won't notice the cut too much. You just sort of focus on the performances, which was, yeah, that was my kind of um, take on it. Whereas initially I was like, I'm gonna do abstract shots of eyeballs, I'm gonna do all these crazy textures, but it, might, it didn't need it in the end. You know, it might have given it a different aesthetic, but I don't think it needed it. I think it's just let the performances breathe, as I say. And um, yeah, and I think also, yeah, the rehearsals we did meant that actually, although we weren't doing that many takes of things, the boys were nailing what we'd done before previously. So it wasn't like I was having to redirect and do too much stuff. It was just kind of, yeah, it just flowed really nicely, which was handy because we didn't have that much time. <laughs> <laughs> you. Fantastic. Um, where, where did you shoot? I was trying to... I mean, oh, yes. so, I, I so we basically Dom and I did a recce didn't we a couple of weeks before um, and I my uh, fiance's family live in Norfolk and I knew that it, we need obviously for the shoot we wanted somewhere that was quite barren and quite sparse mm. um, and Dom and I just did a recce and originally my uh, my girlfriend's parents have got uh, fields behind their uh, house and we had a look, a look in there didn't we Dom but then the farmer drove by and got really, really angry with us being in his field. So we scrapped that. Um, yeah. And then we, we found this just amazing location in Sutton Bridge, which is just, it's just this long road, isn't it, guys, that's on the bank of a, of a river? Yes, it is a river. Yeah, so I think the thing with, with the location was because, again, for me, you know, I wanted this to look cinematic and I'm like, my, you know, the kind of, um, not issues you face, but the, the thing of the script could be, well, hold on, if, if you don't have a really cinematic location or a location that fits the way that these guys are feeling, then it could just be quite dry, could be quite boring, um, because ultimately it is just all in, in, in a car. And initially we were thinking, oh, like, let's go down by like, in somewhere like Skegness or somewhere like right on a coastline, so maybe you've got like the building sort of um, ideas of the elements and stuff. But again, when we looked at and again, it being a short film that you know, the boys are funding, it was something that um, we just needed to keep it simple. But yeah, I think the location works really well. It's kind of up on this little hill. There's no road, yeah, there, there is a road there, but you get the odd car coming down, which actually was quite nice because every now and then, you know, you get little cutaway then coming through and the passing um, sort of vibes. And yeah, we, I was gonna shoot some other kind of bits to go into, but again, it, did, it just it kind of didn't need it. I was thinking that as the film progresses, maybe the weather kind of gets worse, the wind builds up, you know, we cut to like the river and it's getting choppier, but it just didn't, to say, it just didn't need it, I don't think. Um, so yeah, no, the loca location was great and um, we didn't get shouted at by any more farmers, so that was also a result. And we did, we, oh, we, did, we did pay a local farmer 50 quid to use his toilet. So <laughs> I think he's happy about that. Which we didn't end up using. Did we use um, it? I don't think we did. It was the best day of the farmer's life. It was like 50 quid for people to not use my port loo For nothing, for yeah. nothing. 50 quid for nothing, thank you. Do that again, please. I don't think we had time to even go to the loo. Well, so I had quite a few weeds, but we didn't actually, uh, we didn't, no one got a ch had a chance for anything more significant because it was just no, so busy. I, I get a very nervous bladder, but thankfully there was, there was a river there. So, you know, it was a bit more full by the time we left, but it was good that it was there. I was telling James, Si, that's probably something to do with the sort of 17 coffees that you have throughout the day. Uh, so but... We've always got a coffee on the go, this boy, we know this. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, so what's next for each of you? What, what's coming up after after the breakdown? Wow, good question. <laughs> Obviously, Dominic, you're, you're, you're working on something right now. For me, I'm, I'm shooting a commercial for uh, Amazon at the moment. Um, so yeah, more more commercial work. Luckily. Um, I mean, lockdown obviously has been not been great, but um, I'm now shooting again. I've got. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, I'm, I'm actually up there now. Well, this is a mask that you wear when you're shooting, so that's the new uh, reality of being a director on set. Um, but yeah, com commercial projects, and um, and yeah, but I think I mean I'm not. I think for the speaking for the boys as well. I think we said like this is the start for us. Um, and for me, like I've really I've, I've been really busy with commercial things, but I really want to do features and more shorts. So I think for us as well, for me definitely, this was a uh, the start of definitely doing lots more of these. And I think it's easy to sort of focus on commercial projects and chasing the money, but actually what's important is kind of doing things that you really enjoy. And this for me was one of those. So yeah, hopefully the start of more shorts and, uh, and longer scripts and stuff, really. Fantastic. Yeah, I mean, just to echo what Dom said, you know, 
we're so proud of this film because it was a, it was a it was a project of love you know we mm. we sculpted the script we wanted we obviously were such good mates it was just great working together and it, it's just you know when you work you you dream of doing stuff like this and we really made it happen and i think it's just wet our appetite to do more and obviously there's been challenges throughout and funding ourselves producing it ourselves and, and all of that you know even on on the shoot day we were making soup for the the crew in between you know takes and stuff and it, it it was it was hard it was challenges but it feels so rewarding and like already having a little bit of buzz and you know responses from like festivals like yourself is just it's just so good for us because you know this is ultimately it was our debut project the three of us are working together and just to be to be get a great response and just feel so proud of it it's just you know it's addictive we want to do more i know it brilliant uh ollie yeah i mean um <clears throat> it's, it's great obviously now lockdown's kind of easing i've got um I'm working on a video game, so we've got a few filming days for that, and hopefully a bit of voiceover is picking up again. Um, but yeah, I think always wanting to do um, kind of comedy and great sort of inventive, creative things. I mean, that's how I kind of got into the industry. And so, and it's just, you know, we, me and Cy kind of wanted to, you know, make a sitcom because that's something that we wanted to be in. We wanted it to be a vehicle for, for, for you know, for us as, as comedy actors. And, and then the short, again, was a way that we could continue to create and actually just make something that, that you know when you write something to, to turn it into something tangible that you can watch is quite a bizarre surreal but incredibly you know as Sai says you know it's a rewarding experience and so if we can keep doing that in any capacity keep writing scripts you know be it another short be it that if the sitcom gets made you know, we do have some production companies that are interested but I'm sure as you know James it's like it's very difficult getting things made and you have to there's a thousand meetings you go to and a thousand handshakes here before anything tangible happens. So I think we're just going to keep, keep going, really. The fact that we've made this is proof that, you know, you can turn an idea into something real. And so if we can keep going, um, you know, whilst we work and, 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 you know, we've all got different little projects and things that we do. But if we could make something else in whatever capacity, I think that'd be fantastic. So let's see how this film goes, see what the reaction is and more film festivals like yourselves like it. And then hopefully we can keep making stuff, basically. Brilliant. Fabulous. This is quite a good one because, again, what, the, again, the other thing I really liked about the concept, and I think where a lot of, um, uh, I think sometimes, well, I'll put it this way, when I've done uh, like some music videos and things, and you've got like loads of locations, it's really ambitious in terms of the production side of things. I've kind of like, yes, it's good to do those, and yes, certain shorts really benefit from lots of locations, lots of different moves. But actually, this was great because it was one location. We could focus on performance. Focus on doing one thing really simple, hopefully uh, doing one thing really well and keeping it simple and uncluttered. And I think maybe in, in other projects, you know, I think that was a good, a good basis that it was just all about doing one thing well rather than trying to do too much crazy stuff that would detract from what we wanted, which ultimately the reason why we did it, I was like, I want to have, have some more scripted uh, performance work on the showreel. So did the boys and they, they wrote it. And I think it was just an initial a kind of, a, yeah, a, a bit, almost like practice to, you know, to practice this thing that we're doing and get better at it. And I think that, whether, whether it does well in the festivals or not, I think ultimately we've all learned from it. It's the next step and just keep making, keep getting better. And I think as long as you keep progressing, then um, you hopefully move in the right direction. And I think for us, that's what we want, isn't it? Just keep doing bigger and better stuff totally. and enjoy. Wow. As I said, so I was uh, doing, you know, like it's classic size so warming up. That I'll, we had two, no, three crew members. Um, so I was doing soups in this microwave that we'd like plugged into the back of this van and like Ollie's like running around doing other things. You know, it was brilliant. His size father-in-law was the delivery driver on the bike. <laughs> Robbing towards the car, you know, like all these funny little things that could have gone really wrong. Um, but they didn't, thankfully. And yeah, it was, yeah, it was just a little car and steel are, are like the van is is a friend, the car's a friend. Yeah, like the fact that we couldn't even cast, we had to cast size father-in-law on the day hours beforehand you know so we re i mean me and i say i stayed around size si's fiance's house you know it's like <laughs> so this is like kind of his in-laws be like hello ollie and they set me up a little bed and you know and it's like do you want anything it was like a sort of weird adult sleepover you know, it was all it was all just so you know we, 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 but we, we threw it together and, and i think with all of that in mind it looks really professional and i think that's a credit obviously to the way dom's filmed it and, and the editing and but we managed to borrow this great equipment as well that dom had a contact so like we we really managed to just hustle our way to, to kind of make this thing. Yeah. So I should, I should say, um, yeah, massive thank you to One Stop Films, James Irwin there. Um, he gave us all the equipment, lighting, and also ProLight, Leo ProLight. And um, also Simona at Coffee and TV, they did the, the grade and everything. Also Tom Pugh at um, 
Grand Central, he did the audio for us. So um, yeah, we were really lucky. And they're all people I work with on commercials all the time. Um, but it was, yeah, very kind. And yeah, we, we wouldn't have been able to make it without all their help. So yeah, it was much appreciated. And they're going to get hit up hopefully in a couple months soon for another one. So yeah, hopefully it does well for them. Give us more free shit, please, so we can yeah. make stuff. Uh, yeah, it's the lifeblood of short films, though, free shit, isn't it? I mean, you, you do need it, otherwise you can't can't get these things done listen guys thank you so much we, 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 that was great we could go on and on and on but we we can't obviously but um that was fantastic so breakdown is playing on wednesday the 15th of july you can get tickets at unrestrictedview.co.uk it's a brilliant film do do log on and watch it and uh, and thanks again guys it was great to meet you all and chat and um see you very soon i hope take care thanks. yeah have a nice James Schmaint, to get that down your neck and move on. Come on, let's party! That's not a pig, that's a human torso! Someone needs to check out that pair of night. You're good, Mrs. Raisin. You're hired. They're gonna be watching you. Mark my words, it's all about to bounce down here. I think it was a statement. Someone really does want you to back off. What in God's hell's name was that? You have got to be kidding me.